Welcome to Godseeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message, in the end. Is the dinner cooked? How is your calorie count today? Have you exercised? Was it enough? How about sleep? Did you get that done? Did you drink enough water? Is your hair the right color? Are your clothes where they need to be? Is where you live organized, clean, and tidy as you've been told it should be? Are your teeth white enough? Are your muscles built enough? Do you have the best job? Do you have enough money? Is your personal life in order? Did your children get what you think is best? Have you achieved what you thought was important? Have you set your next goal? Did you take that vacation? Have you made your bucket list? Are you making sure you get what you think you deserve? What are your goals about, really? Are they about anything that lasts? Are they about true significance, like living a life with a purpose beyond yourself? Does the way you're investing your time and the priorities to which you ascribe value actually have value when considered in the long run? Is it more precious than gold? Or in reality, are your concerns and your focus like mining for fool's gold, which in the end will have no value because it was never precious or of worth at all? In the end. Yes, there is an end coming. In the end. What will it all have meant? What will it have been for? In the end. Which is coming. In the end, there is death and life and what you do in between. How will you invest the limited amount of time you have in the brevity of a temporal lifetime? All those names in history books were real people like you who felt alive when they were alive, so much so that just like you, it felt as if the present would always be. It would not become past. It was. It was lived, living reality. But their time did become past and their lives ended. Surely for them at the end of life, they looked back and it all seemed as if it had been but a blink. And in terms of eternity, it was. What will you leave behind? In the end, what really matters? Perhaps no one really cares about your stuff the way you do. So what is the true legacy with meaning, of significance, Why does it matter you are here? You have today. You have this moment. What will you do with it? How will you spend it? What investment will you make of it towards the future? What will be said of you when you're gone? And in what form will your life continue thereafter? Your life matters. Don't try to tell me you don't matter because you do. You were created with great purpose, with an assignment for particular work to be done, for a legacy to be left behind, which only you can do. Let's say it again. Your life matters. Only the worth of your life cannot be measured by things acquired or achievements on a list. God already created you of infinite value. The goals he sets for you cannot be measured in the same way society measures worth, especially in the 21st century United States of America culture. What matters will be how you loved, how you loved God and those around you. This is the legacy of what you can leave behind, the perfume, the fragrance, the aroma of how you considered others better than yourself. Not in a way you put down self, but where you have nothing to prove because you already know who you are to God. You are at peace with yourself and with others. You are getting to know more the heart of God and are invested in His plans. His plans for you, for your particular life, are of greatest worth. Let's say it again the greatest plans for your life, and the only ones of lasting value, the only plans that matter, are God's. True life significance 
cannot be measured through human valuation or achievement. Your worth is inextricably linked to how God made you. He made you in love, which does not stop no matter what. You can walk away from him, and there are consequences for this. But it does not change God's innate, infinite, unconditional love for you, no matter what. It is also never too late for you to embrace the life God has for you where exquisite, tender, greatest, lasting meaning is found, just being with God. There is nothing else you have to do or achieve to live a life of highest meaning. To be with God now through forever is what you were made for. Not to become part of some universal blob, but to remain the endlessly valued individual person you are, who has a God-given contribution to make. You live in Him spiritually, and He in you, without losing your individuality or personhood. For who you are is precious to Him. He made you. The work to which you are called as a part of his mystical, spiritual body where he is the head, so the brains with the strategy and plan, is not for the sake of the work. Significance is not about climbing some ladder or checking off items on a list, but because you are choosing to draw so close to God, you become aware of that for which his heart beats. You recognize his supremacy and experience his care so that out of the font of relief and utter gratitude, you pledge allegiance to him and only want his will. Your will no longer has meaning, because you can see it is so much less, and in reality, leads to nowhere. Work for God comes forth out of the presence, out of the time you spend in his presence, whether you are physically still or going about your day. The work for God, your work, whatever it is, so long as it stems out of this place of unity with Him and is God-given, is of infinite, eternal consequence. This shifts everything. The questions change. Instead of where you began, the questions become more like this. Is God's light, which is truth and love, joy and peace, justice and help, shining through you into someone's darkness? Do you see the suffering of the ones next to you enough to make time for their stories? To enter into it? To do your part? Are you present to the ones next to you in the way that they need? Do you know what their needs are? Are you invested in the relationships around you that don't give back or reciprocate right now, or when these become inconvenient when compared to your goals? It doesn't matter if you are a shut in or invalid, or working in a corporation, in a factory, or on a farm. It doesn't matter if you are what the world considers crippled. There is God work for you for such a time as this, to love Him and be His love, in ways which you might be tempted to think are too small to have meaning. But be careful what measure you use. God's measures are the only ones that matter. His are not the same as society touts. Remember, human wisdom is foolishness to him. In the end, and the end will come, everything less will fall away. What matters most will be how you sought God, how he helped you find him, how you lived with him, and how this flowed out into living for him, committed to him through everything so he can put it to use more. Oh, and just remember as you go looking for this, Doing is second. Being with God, it's first. Let's finish with a few verses from the Bible which share what Jesus says about the community he asks us to build with each other under his leadership. John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another Just as I have loved you, so you too should love one another. By this all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another, if you keep on showing love among yourselves. Listen to the song God Seeker on the God Seeker album. You can find the song 
Godseeker on my YouTube channel, various streaming services, and always on CD. Listen to it over and over until it becomes your prayer. Thank you for joining in. Godseeker messages are sponsored by Eagles Nest Foundation. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. I am praying for you. Until next time, make the song Godseeker your prayer and keep seeking God.